Welcome to another video. So this one is related to relations. It's kind of the third video, I guess, in the series on relations. And this one is on data sampling. So how do we sample data or how do we collect if we want to create some kind of a survey, if we want to be able to create some graphs, want to take out some data out of uh, some particular population. So how do we do that? So I would um, take an example, for instance, and so let's say I have a class, I'm not saying that I have a class, but let's say I do have a class that I would want to be able to survey. And in that class, I am interested in all the students that have passed that class. And let's say I have 40 students in general that have passed the class. So now if I want to be able to ask them some kind of hypothesis, for example, and I am the primary data collector, and, and by the way, hypothesis and, and primary and secondary data collector, I'll put a link because that was a previous video. So if I am the collector of this data, what I can do is because there's only 40 students okay, that have passed, let's say this particular class, I can technically say, all right, so I can create a survey based on all the students. So all 40 students that I would have. Now, when you say that you have, or are you taking the entire set of students? So in this case, we call that a population. Population is basically every single member that fits this survey that I want. So if I have 40 students that passed the class and I take a survey of all of those students, okay, then I basically have been able to survey all of them, that entire population. So population in general means all of them, okay? Every single possible one that I have. Now, if you do take a survey, and in that case, okay, so what you're doing is, and it is from the entire population, then we call that a census, okay? That we are taking that particular survey. So we're not sampling anything, right? We're not taking a portion of the entire population. We are actually taking the entire population. Now, if I wasn't able to take, or maybe it would take too much time, maybe I can't reach everybody or something of that nature, or maybe I don't need the entire 40 students, maybe I need a sample, so a smaller number. So in that case, what I would be doing is, okay, so I would be, taking some survey, okay, or I am sampling data from a particular set of students, which is not necessarily the entire population. So that would be a sample. So typically, this would not be all, so not all the students that I have. So that's the key distinction between population and sample. In some instances, it's very difficult to take a survey of the entire population. I mean, imagine if you wanted to take a survey of all, you know, the people that live in a particular country, let's say whatever country that may be, say Spain or something like that, that would be hard to do, right? To get a census across the entire thing. So oftentimes, just because of practicality, financial reasons, okay, or maybe some other reasons, okay, maybe resources that we have, we can't really sample the entire population. Now, if I have the 40 students and maybe that was the class that I was running and I have access to them because on the last day, let's say they all show up, then great, you know, I can certainly do that. It wouldn't take me too many resources to go through this. So the difference between population and a sample is remember that sample is not all the members, all right? And population is basically, okay, or are all the members that we have, okay, that will fit our particular survey. So for whatever hypothesis that I have, and let's say my 40 students that have passed that particular class, um, if I cannot sample or if I can't do the entire census of the whole population, what can I do, right? So there are basically in a sampling, when you're doing a sampling, you can kind of choose two different paths. You can choose the path of random sampling and non-random sampling. Now, what is the difference between random or what does even the word random mean? So random just means that there is some uniform chance 
of picking each member okay, of the entire population. So for example, if there were 40 students, all right, okay, and this was a completely random kind of a sample of data that I wanted to collect, then I would have one out of a 40 chance, okay, to pick a student, and that would be uniform. It's exactly uniform for all of the students. So if I wanted to take a sample of 10 students, and everybody basically has a chance, okay, that is the same. Non-random means that you do not have a particular, okay, uniform distribution that you have within that sample. Now, what does that mean? Kind of non-random way. So how would that happen? Well, if I have 40 students, I can be what sometimes we call a bias, okay? So non-random may create a bias of some kind. And that bias may be say, I wanna just take the students that received 90% in the course. And because maybe, you know, if I was running that class and I wanted to take those students because I wanted to get feedback and I was kind of biased towards getting good feedback because, you know, higher grades typically means better feedback for a particular teacher or professor or le lecturer or something like that. It would be a bias. That wouldn't be a uniform way of taking those students, right? Okay, because that excludes a lot of other students from. Now, you can create other biases, right, as you're going along that are not necessarily random. Now, with these random choices, okay, that we have, so very often what happens is we have, okay, so these random, in terms of sampling, okay, we very often have something called simple random sampling. And this okay, occurs when we take a particular set of students. Let's say I would want to take 10 out of students out of the 40 students that passed the class at a uniform chance. Okay, so maybe I will draw the names out of a hat. Okay, so that it's all randomized and they're all in that same one group. That would be called a simple random sampling where I am not evoking anything in special about these students. They're all kind of chosen at random from that 40. Or maybe I generate a computer that just picks the numbers at random until I get my 10 students. So that would be kind of sampling and this is called the simple random sampling. Okay, now there is another form, okay, or another way of sampling, okay, and this particular second one is often called systematic sampling, so systematic random sampling. So notice they're all still random, so I'm not biasing this in any way. So now what does systematic random sampling mean? Well, systematic random sampling, so the word systematic, means that there is some system, there is something that you might be picking off, all right? Some systematic way of picking these students. So an example of this could be if you have 40 students, okay, and let's say that they're in, uh, in an order where, you know, they go from the lowest grade that they received to the highest grade. So it's since I'm talking about students who pass the class, so it'll be students, you know, ranging from 50% all the way to 100%, and they're kind of scattered across, you know, you have that list. And now you want it to be able to randomly sample this in a systematic way. What you can do is you can say, all right, so well, if I want 10 students, for example, in the whole thing, what I could do, I can systematically pick every fourth student, right? Okay, until I basically get my 10 students in total. So that is a systematic way of actually sampling from the entire data that I have. So I could kind of rearrange them. They could have been in alphabetical order for all that matters. And then I would just kind of systematically take every fourth student. Um, or I don't have to do every fourth. You know, I can do it something different, okay, in order to collect. But that's, that's a systematic way, okay? That's not a simple random way because simple just simply means that I have take all of them and at random I just pick them, right? Okay, so let's say out of a hat, okay, kind of a way. 
Now, systematic means that you are, you have a system in place where you are going to be systematically picking, you know, every so often to get your data all together. All right. Now, the last one that I want to talk about. Okay, so this one is called stratified. So stratified. So stratified. Okay, and again, it's still random sampling. So let me just copy this and paste it back down. Now, what does the word stratified random sampling means? So stratified in general means that we are actually going to group these students. So we're going to collect them, we're going to group them in. Now, from each group, because we want to randomly sample, and we want to have kind of a sample from each group, you know, if we have and for instance, if I'm talking about students, right, that have passed the class, I could, okay, create groups. So let's say, you know, the groups that so I said, students that passed so from 50 to 59%, you know, that would be my group number one, I could then say I have another group, which is from 60% to 69. That would be my second group and so on, okay, until I get to my last group, which is would be from 90. So I'm basically going every 10%, let's say to 99 or to 100%. Okay, so I have these groups, okay, that I have created. So now I'm stratifying these. And what I will do is I will say, okay, so since I want, okay, to have, let's say 10 total, okay, so I have the group of 50, 60, 70, 80, okay, and the 90 group, okay, so I have five different groups. And if I want to have a total of 10 students, then what I would do is at random, I would pick, pick two students from each of these groups, okay, two and two and two and so on, which would mean that I would have a total of my 10 students. That would be stratified, where I basically have created some groups and then from each at random, I will pick two out of here, two out of here, two out of here, and so on. Now, recall what I said is, if I just pick, let's say, students from the 90% group, right, that wouldn't really be biased. Okay? Sorry, that would be a biased way because I, I know that I'm only picking from that particular group. So these are the three ways of basically sampling out of an entire population that you have. And it's very useful to know these uh, because very often in statistics, as you carry on, it's not just for math, but if you do anything from healthcare to engineering um, to any statistical to business, to any statistics that you run into, you will have to sample at some point because it's almost next to impossible, you know, to get the entire population, right, to be able to survey them in some way. And these, okay, these samples that we get, they give us a scope of how or whatever hypothesis we might come up with, you know, how do these hypotheses, you know, how can we make them true or false, okay, based on samples when we cannot create the entire data. All right. So I hope that this gives you a sense. Okay. So again, you should take out of this video, okay, the difference between a sample which is not the entire population, it's some set that you're picking out, okay, so some subset. You should know the that census means that you're taking a survey of the entire population, so that's another good word to know, okay? So sample, population, census. You should know the difference between sampling at random and sampling at non-random, okay? And then, you know, you should know the differences between simple random sampling, systematic, and stratified random sampling. These are kind of the most common ones that you run into. So you can kind of review the video again. And as I finish these videos, you know, I'll give you a little bit of a test on these relations. And I'll put some of these questions up there. And we'll see how well you understand the difference if you can actually provide some examples. All right. Okay, thank you for watching. All right till uh, next time. Okay. Take care, all the uh, Niners out there that are watching, or if you're someone else. Okay, cheers, bye.